Okay, I'm going to call to order the special meeting for uh, July 23rd. And I'm going to ask Supervisor Chadwick to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, uh, public comment. This time is for information from the public on matters not appearing on the agenda. On this agenda, all comments are limited to three minutes and must pertain to matters within the jurisdiction of this board. When addressing the board, please state your name for the record and address the board as a whole through the chair. No action or discussion will be conducted on matters not listed on the agenda. However, the chair may refer the subject matter to an appropriate department for follow-up or schedule the matter on a subsequent and forward agenda. No public comment? All right. On to county matters. These items are non-routine or or controversial matters that are listed alphabetically by department and members of the board, staff, or public may request an item be heard out of order. Number one, Human Resources 1.1, conduct oral interviews for four candidates in open session to fill the office of district attorney for the unexpired term ending December 31st, 2022. Approximate cost and salary and benefits at step A for the district attorney is fourteen thousand five hundred and seventy-four dollars. So Sophie, do you wanna just an overview before we start? We have our first interviews at 1015. And I do see our first candidate, I believe, standing in the back of the room, so I'll be brief. You have all been provided as part of the packet a copy of the interview questions. We are going to stick to those interview questions. There are nine. We are hoping to get through them all um, for each candidate. They are the standardized questions that we developed from talking with a number of other counties who have gone through this process fairly recently as well. And then after uh, all the candidates have been interviewed this morning, we will open up to public comment with regards to those candidates. We will also have a second public comment at the afternoon after those candidates have also been interviewed, then the board will continue into deliberations. We will report out of deliberations um, what happens, what the decision is. So I have a nice thing is on here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Once you teach me something, I'll never be able to go back. <laughs> So I believe Bobby had a question first. Yes, so if you I'm sorry I wasn't here um, earlier uh, and perhaps County Council went over this but there's just a couple questions I had and then um, one question I have is is the board supervisor under a time restraint on appointing this vacant DA position and if so I'd like to be provided with those codes um, I don't need it right this second. Maybe when we go to lunch, it'd be a good time for me to review that. Um, I couldn't find anything. And then also, um, is there? Um, I have a, I have my own question, and I'm reading the backup. It said that this came out of a different board of supervisors um, handbook. And so I guess I have two questions. I want to submit a question that you can ask everyone. And the second question is, does Trinity County not have its own um, paperwork or procedures for an appointment for the DA? We have a the standard appointment procedure, which is what we're doing, which is they submit an application pursuant to the application. Um, this, district attorney application that everybody filled out. They provided us their information, the application, their history, as well as letters of reference. And then we come to open session and we have the interviews conducted in open session. This is standard procedure. And then the closed session gives the board a chance to deliberate and make a decision. And then whatever happens, closed session is reported out to the public after that closed session. That's the standard procedure. With regards to the actual questions that were developed, 
we don't have a standardized set of questions necessarily. We pull from other resources that we know that have recently gone through a similar procedure such as this when a DA has left in the middle of their term with a portion of the term remaining. And we have pulled from those questions and through uh, Mr. Coons and Shelley Nelson in HR, we have developed, um, in County Council's office, have developed a list of questions that we feel are comprehensive and able to be gone through during the time allotted for each candidate that give us the depth and breadth of their experience and give you a well-rounded um, ability to determine whether or not they are qualified or the right person for this job. As far as an individual question goes, I'm going to leave that up to the chairman of the board as to whether or not um, you want to submit that to him and if he wants to add it to the list or not. That's a decision I think that he would make as of this time. Was that all three of them? And then um, as far as timeline goes, I don't believe there's a specific timeline that we have to appoint a person in. We need to establish continuity of the, de the department in and of itself. We do not want to leave an interim position available when we have qualified um, candidates there ready to fill that position and we can get a continuity of prosecution and the other um, deputies and assistants in that office, somebody that can run and manage that department. We've got qualified candidates, so there's no point in, in delaying, I think, is where the county was at. Okay, so I guess I guess I'm waiting to hear from Chairman Groves if I understood if I can submit my question. Um, there is no time limit, is my understanding, and um, Trinity County does not have, and that's why we borrowed a different counties. Um, I think it's on page eight of your flash drive. Um, I don't have my flash drive in front of me. That it's a Alpine County um, was we're using. I'm just curious to know why we're using another county's anything. Are you talking about the guide for board members? Yes. This guide for board members was developed very recently with our office in Alpine County with regards to a very similar situation. They had the DA retire in the middle of their term and we had to appoint a new DA. And I think the reason it says Alpine County on this is that simply just a typo and it was missed when we went through a review of this document. But it's a document the County Council has developed um, using guidelines like from Wake Forest and other places that we find very helpful when it comes to making these types of informed decisions. So our office has been key in developing this document. We did it first for Alpine County and um, it's not uncommon for counties to not have this type of information for us to develop it for them. So we borrowed it from Alpine County and I guess we just on page 8 failed to, to change Alpine to Trinity. Okay, so I guess so um, what uh, what I'll do is um, you can submit the question to me. I will meet rather quickly with Sophie and Shelley, and we will then uh, make sure it is appropriate. And at that point, any other board member that has a question that they would like to submit at this late date, uh, we'll do so very quickly. We also had other questions, so John, you have a question? Yes, Sophie, can you please repeat the uh, public comment periods? Public comment, as you see on the agenda, is listed at the very beginning. Um, we intend on actually having public comment at the end of each session, morning session and afternoon session, after the candidates have actually been interviewed. We believe that gives the public a chance to view the candidates and then give you their input with regards to them Perfect. while it's fresh. After each Just session. want to make sure the public's aware of that. And uh, there is a date at the end of that same document that Supervisor Chadwick brought up, whether that has any problem uh, it's backdated. with our, excuse me? The one that's backdated. Um, Hang on, let it finish. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, whether that poses any problem today. Just want to point that out. It does not. Your agenda Thank states. You very much. Thank you. Any other questions? No, sir. Mr. Mines. Just have a quick procedural question. What is the policy on candidates uh, sitting in during other interviews? This is a public hearing. We have requested that the candidates um, stay outside of the court or the boardroom while the other candidates are being interviewed before their interview, they can sit afterwards. Um, that is a request we have made. We cannot force anybody to stay outside. It is a public hearing. 
Okay, if no other questions, I have one. Um, so this is written that it's to uh, fill the unexpired term ending uh, December 31st, 22. Um, isn't, don't we have two unexpired terms that we have to fill? We have the current term and then the December 22 is the four-year term following right. that. So, yes, so we don't, here we don't say that we're filling from now until the end of the year. Technically, if you want to, you can, but we're, we... I mean, I, I don't want to get into technically, do you need to? Because you say unexpired term as in singular. If you want to add an S, I'm fine with that. <coughs> I would prefer uh, simply to fill the current term and then take a look at it again at the end of December or beginning of January, probably into December. Is that possible? No. Okay. That answer, did that answer your question? Yeah. Um, she said it's not possible to write that. I just want to make sure that in this agenda, we have the right to a point. Through two terms, this term, this term, term. term. Yes. If we so choose. Yes, you do. But and do, we, do the, we have the choice not to? You always you have the choice to not pick any of the candidates today. Yes. Well, that that wasn't the direction I was going in. Uh, do we have a choice to fill only between now and December thirty first for the current term, and then appoint again for January second election? The the Eric the. the Judge Hereford won. We actually have two separate terms that we're, we're dealing with. And Am I yes. mis overstepping? No, okay. I, I understand the question. I'm trying to formulate in my mind um, the most appropriate answer. And again, I'm going to say technically, I believe, yes, you can appoint for the remainder of this term. And then you could appoint somebody different through the remainder of the next term. However, I don't believe that's how it was advertised in your application. I think your application states that you want somebody to fill the remainder of this term through the 22, um, so you know, 2022. So it may change your application Perfect. for that, you that to makes, change that. That makes all the difference in the world. Okay. And so it was advertised through the 2022. Yes. Tina. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right, with that, um, I'll ask Shelly and Sophie to sidebar with me. I just want to check one word.
sadly, I'm going to tape it down. Wrap it with tape. There you go. Supervisor uh, Chadwick will be added on to number five uh, as, as a second part of number five when we're talking there. Uh, in the normally, I prefer to have one person of staff ask the questions, uh, but does the board have a different view? I prefer that we rotate because it gives us engagement with the candidates. Uh, that's one to rotate. 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 Okay. Shall we make have one question? Or are you going to send it to Whatever question you can rotate it to. I'm really more than happy for some of us to rotate. Okay. Thank you. We, we will have somebody read the, 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 the question five that has yours out. And so. anyone that would be in my rotation. Okay. All right. All right. With that, I guess we're going to rotate. Any other? Clarifications that we need to do? Question. Um, just for that, we're going to start in the back at number five. <laughs> okay. Shelly, please bring in the candidate. Previously, and we will have a change, a slight change into question number five that will 
get there when, when we when get there. The, the board will rotate questions through to you, and we will have 45 minutes to, to go through this process. And let's see, anything else? I, we have, uh, when you answer the questions, we have the ability to ask some follow-up questions as long as they're germane to what you value. So we'll start off with District 5 asking the first question. I'm the lucky one. I'm District 5. Um, Megan, Ms. Marshall, I'm sorry. Please explain to us your qualifications and the elements of your career that you believe are especially relevant to the position of District Attorney. Also, please share with us why you are interested in leaving your current position, which is almost the same, <laughs> and joining Trinity County, which you already are joined to. Thank you very much. <laughs> we want to be fair, though. Yes, I, I, first I want to thank you all for the opportunity to come and speak to you all about my qualifications. Um, I have over 20 years of experience as a criminal prosecutor. I have prosecuted every manner of case from DUI and driving under the influence to um, murder and manslaughter. I have decades of experience prosecuting serious and violent felonies, including rape, armed robbery, assault with a firearm. I worked a felony arson case where a 12-year-old was uh, doused in gasoline and set on fire. I've done gang assaults, um, murder of young children, um, and multiple child molestation cases. And I'm very passionate about victims' rights. I believe that this county deserves someone who will work very hard to ensure that their rights are upheld in court. But I'm also a fair-minded prosecutor. I've done a fair share of misdemeanor um, prosecution, and I think it's important to have prosecutorial discretion. And I'm a prosecutor who focuses on rehabilitation on minor cases. Um, I believe that we should be able to use all of the services we have available here in our county to be able to help people get back on the right path. Um, I'm a member of multiple boards here in Trinity County, including the Trinity Opioid so Safety Coalition, the Child Safety Review Team, the uh, Child Death Review Team, the Trinity County Peer Court, that's uh, one that's very near and dear to my heart. I've worked with peer courts for over 20 years. Um, the Trinity County Community Court Board, um, we're involved in uh, trying to get a Trinity County Drug Court here, which is desperately needed. I'm also very involved in our community. I am on the uh, Rotary Club Scholarship Board. I am the treasurer for our Trinity Seroptimus Club. I've been the team mom for our Little League uh, teams and the PE football teams and our All-Star teams. And I'm very dedicated to this um, community. As you said, I I'm already your current acting DA. Um, I have no desire to leave this community. My family has lived here for six generations. Um, and I am completely invested in this community. Um, and I, I think that it's important to point out that um, not only do I reside here, but I am registered to vote here, which, as I'm sure you're aware of in the elections code, is one of the requirements for this position. And I think it's important that the district attorney live in the community that they are uh, ordered to protect, because this is a personal job for me. It's important for me to have a safe community where my children can grow up, where my family and friends can live. Um, and there are other candidates that might use this uh, position as a stepping stone somewhere else. That is not me. I have been uh, in the district attorney's office for 22 years, and I plan on working for another 22 years. So uh, I'm very dedicated to this county, and you will not find another attorney who will work harder to keep this community safe. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The second question I'll take, and I'll just start going in. Do you want us to follow up? Oh, yes. Thank you. Go ahead. I'll have some follow-up questions. Ms. Marshall, I just have two quick clarifications. I'm not sure if I heard you correctly. Um, you mentioned you were in uh, district attorney's office for 22 years. You meant overall, not this particular office. Correct. I was at the uh, Placer County district attorney's office since 1996 before moving here. Okay. And then my second follow-up question is, you raised a very good point. Um, district attorneys before you have always seemed to find um, where appropriate, of course, uh, a balance between uh, victims' rights, uh, rehab, uh, 
um, a very pragmatic, practical view that's serving justice due, due to a variety of reasons. Do you see that um, changing in your mode? Um, I, I can go back to many DAs who really kind of really balanced it fairly. I mean, sometimes it didn't always get balanced, in my opinion, but um, in most cases there is a, a definite um, ability and, and, and wanting to find the balance between. Do you see that changing? You know, I, I think that a balance is very important, uh, especially in this community. We're, we're a very tight in the community. We know one another. I, I think it's incumbent upon the leaders of our community to help our community members improve and get better. We, we for example, have a very serious drug addiction problem here in our community. And, and some prosecutors are, you know, throw them in jail and, and, and walk away. But, that doesn't work. You have to have a better approach. And I think being able to utilize all of our county agencies, we, we have so many services to be able to provide. Uh, and while we don't have our Trinity County Drug Court up and running yet, I've actually already started my own um, version of DA diversion on all of our simple drug pros um, prosecution cases, um, whereby I uh, request that the um, person seek recovery. I uh, mandate some AA and NA meetings, and I have implemented a DA diversion program where if they show that they have received recovery and that they're doing the steps they need, that those, those criminal cases are dismissed. Because I don't think that we need to have criminal records on, on all of our community members in order to effectuate change. I think we just need to show people um, options that can help them. Thank you very much. Any other follow-up questions? <coughs> All right, question number two. How many trials have you prosecuted or defended? I've prosecuted over 100 trials in my 20-year career. Um, and I can, with the time constraints today, I can talk about a couple of highlights of uh, cases that I've tried. Um, I successfully prosecuted a felony arson case um, uh, with the Great Bodily Injury Trial. Again, that was a case where a 12-year-old victim was dousing gasoline and set on fire. Uh, and that was a very uh, difficult legal case. Um, the reason for that, uh, in addition to the fact that the victim was severely burned and, and very young, um, there is an element under felony assault and great bodily injury that states that the defendant burned property which caused injury to a person. And in this particular case, the only property that would have been burned would have been the shirt. However, in this case, the shirt was so doused in gasoline that there weren't even any holes in it. And the defendant had taken that shirt from the child and had thrown it in the washing machine in order to hide the evidence. Um, so when we received that evidence, it, it looked like a standard 12-year-old shirt with a couple of, of little black marks on the bottom, which frankly looked like dirt. Um, but I was able to uh, work with our local fire investigator who had uh, been trained in um, fire damage. Um, I researched that extensively. I wrote trial briefs and motions in order to educate the um, uh, trial judge to let her know that the fibers had actually melted. And you could see under a microscope that that was what had caused the slight discoloration that looked like little black marks. And as a result, I was able to um, prevail and uh, convict uh, for the felony arson with great bodily injury in that case. Um, I also handled the Holzman murder trial here in Trinity County. Um, that was a murder that occurred in a pay fork at a marijuana grill. And I received this case uh, several years after it had happened. Um, and I reviewed all the evidence. There was over 300 pieces of evidence that, were, um, that was in that case. And um, after reviewing the evidence, I believed that the victim had been shot twice. However, the police report only showed one bullet uh, at the location where the victim's body was found. So I took my DA investigator, we went out to the scene, we used metal detectors, I reinterviewed all the witnesses, I contacted everybody in that case. Um, and we actually, after our investigation, located a second bullet hole that was in the back door of the residence that had not been located at the time of the crime. Um, and that evidence um, was instrumental to prove my theory that the defendant had shot at the victim inside the house and then had chased him around and then killed him in front of the, um, the building. I can also tell you I have a great deal of experience um, handling child molestation cases. Um, I interviewed six 
separate victims of child molestation last week alone. The number of cases I have on my desk in that regard are staggering. Um, and it takes a very special expertise to be able to be successful in those cases. Um, I have um, successfully prosecuted here in Trinity County a double child molestation case with two very young victims. Um, again, that was a handoff case that I received. Uh, and when I received it, it was charged as um, a simple um, child assault um, under 288A, which is a 368 uh, triad. And this is a case where one of the child victims um, was five years old when she was raped by that 55-year-old predator. And um, I did not believe that that was an appropriate handling of the case. So I promptly started researching. I found um, a, an enhancement uh, under 667.61, which is a life enhancement for uh, predators who um, molest more than one victim. Um, we had a serious battle for trial. We had over 30 motions in one day, about 18 hour days to make sure that we were able to su successfully prosecute that defendant. Um, and I'm happy to say that we just finished our appeal. Uh, last year, and that defendant is incarcerated for life. And so I can tell you that my extensive litigation experience um, is going to ensure that our most dangerous predators uh, are incarcerated. Okay, any follow-ups? Nope. Okay, well, Supervisor Morris, hand number three. How would you describe your relationship with each of the local enforcement agency, i.e. sheriff, police, safety, <coughs> information, force service, I actually have very strong relationships with all of our county agencies and our law enforcement officers. You know, I, I believe that we are all on the same team. We are all working towards the same goal of improving safety for our community. Um, I work closely with the Trinity County Probation Department every single day. Um, we work on cases together. We will decide what can we do to help our juvenile offenders, um, what can we do to help our victims navigate uh, through our, our justice system. Uh, in fact, you should have several recommendations from uh, multiple probation officers who know my work ethic and, and know how I've um, helped this community. I also work very closely with our law enforcement agents, such as the Sheriff's Department, um, CHP, CAL FIRE, uh, Fish and Wildlife. Um, when I review cases, I personally contact the investigating officers. Um, they know that I'm always available to them. They call me on my cell phone after hours um, to ask me questions about search warrants. Uh, they come into my office to discuss case parameters. I will email new case law to make sure that they're up to speed on what the newest case changes are. Um, I've actually conducted multiple trainings at the CHP office to educate our new officers about DUI procedures and blood draw um, policies. Um, I've also worked with the CHP very closely on uh, trying to eradicate the very high number of vehicular manslaughter cases that we have here. Those are also particularly difficult cases. Um, and we have an epidemic here in Trinity County. I saw how many cases were on my desk. I knew I needed to do something. And uh, because of my relationship with the CHP, um, I was able to create a um, countywide presentation for our schools. Um, I uh, asked the CHP to bring a um, rollover chassis, which is a, it's a vehicle that doesn't have any windows in it, and it's on a bar that's attached to a motor that will um, uh, show what it looks like in a rollover accident. And we went to the schools and did a presentation on the dangers of DUIs uh, and not wearing your seatbelt, because in every single one of my vehicular manslaughter cases, the victim was not wearing their seatbelt. Um, and I think that that was a really good presentation because uh, those are the things that are going to impact our kids and really encourage them to wear their seatbelt. We have a crash test dummy that we will put inside the chassis. We show what it's like going through a rollover with your seatbelt on. And then they see what happens when you don't wear your seatbelt, that they are um, thrown from the car. And I think that that's something that's really going to change um, our future for uh, reducing the amount of horrible slaughter cases we have. I'm also involved with the CHP with um, every 15 minutes uh, and I'm very dedicated to uh, working with our community closely and all of our law enforcement agencies to make sure that our community is safer. Okay. Any follow-up questions? Ms. Chadwick, go ahead and read number four. Okay. Supervisor Mike. 
What is your position on drug-related offenses and prosecution of such if appointed? Yes, I have over 20 years of experience in the prosecution of drug cases. Um, as I said earlier, Trinity County has a severe um, drug addiction problem. I'd say over 80% of our criminal cases um, are um, impacted by somebody who has a serious drug addiction. And I've seen firsthand that the cycle that we have of drug use, abuse, addiction, crime, incarceration is a revolving door. And simple incarceration is not enough to change that. Um, and as I said earlier, I have started my own diversion program um, for people with simple uh, possession to try to encourage recovery. Um, I personally have over 20 years of experience um, in drug courts, including juvenile drug court, Proposition 36 drug court, three different um, tiers of adult drug courts. I've actually received um, accommodations and awards because I'm, I'm very dedicated to that um, program. And I, I, we desperately need a drug court program here. I've been working very closely with probation in order to make that a reality. Um, I've met with him um, as with the Trinity County Community Court Board um, to help him um, prepare the protocols that are necessary. I'm very familiar with um, the procedures that need to be um, implemented in order to make that um, drug court a reality. As I said earlier, I'm also a member of the Trinity County Opioid Safety Coalition Board. Um, and I work very closely with behavioral health, our law enforcement agents, our medical personnel in order to address the serious heroin epidemic and the prescription drug addiction that we're seeing here in this county. Um, and right now we're working on a community outreach program in order to um, educate our um, community members about the dangers of prescription drug addictions. We're uh, providing naloxone to our at-risk uh, members in order to reduce our uh, overdose deaths. Uh, and I'm actually very happy to report that our Reading Rancheria um, has gotten the training uh, to certify several of its members to be able to provide Suboxone, um, which is a very important service that we need in this community. Um, I've seen firsthand what happens when you have um, someone who is suffering from heroin addiction. When I was working in Proposition 36, um, we had a um, husband and wife come in who were severely addicted to heroin. Their children had been taken away. Um, the female had um, had um, needle marks all up and down her arms, down her legs, around her neck. She looked like she was about to die. Um, and with the wraparound services that we were able to provide at our drug court, um, she was able to get on Suboxone, get clean and sober. Her husband was able to get the first job that he'd ever gotten in 10 years. Um, that's an 18-month program that we used, um, and I'm hoping that we can use a similar um, uh, program here in Trinity County. I find it to be very effective. It's a 12-month program through the court, and then there's a six-month aftercare program that's available. Um, and they were able to reunify with their children. It was an incredible um, success that I think would not have happened if we did not have that um, structure in place for the drug courts. Um, I also want to say that, I've, that drug cases require careful prosecutorial discretion. Um, and as your DA, I'm going to ensure that those cases are handled properly. I've already met with the head of our narcotics task force uh, and impressed upon them that under my supervision, our focus is going to be on environmental damage in some cases. I think that we need to protect our environmental resources. Um, and I also think it's very important that we set up a protocol, and I've already met with Fish and Wildlife to make sure that we are all on the same page on how we handle these cases. Because I, I think it's important um, for our community members to understand, first of all, the process of what's going to happen through the permitting, through ordinance violations, and that they're on notice of what is expected. Um, and I want there to be a protocol in place about what's going to happen when someone is pouring pesticides into the ground and diverting water and clear cutting our forests, is once the pesticides enter our drinking water, we are going to be in very dire straits. Um, and as your uh, DA, I'm going to be focusing on rehabilitation and recovery and uh, protecting our environmental resources. Okay, hello. Oh, did you? 
Um, you raised an important issue that uh, the country is facing on the opiate crisis, um, uh, prescription drugs, and which leads to the uh, most cases heroin addiction, and, and of course meth has uh, been a big problem not just here but across the country. How many cases have um, you've seen come through your office in terms of those who are transporting those drugs, those who are really, I mean it's one thing, those who are um, being charged with crimes as a user, but what about the larger dealers, those who are transporting across 299? Um, in some places in the, in the country, uh, DA offices are going after those who supply the opiate if it resulted in a death. Um, I don't know how many have come through your office in terms of those who are supplying um, and what would your position be? You're, uh, we've actually seen um, and are pretty much aware of who the players are that are working in the drug sales here in Trinity County. We do have a very strong narcotics task force. Um, and while um, during my tenure here, we have seen cases with pounds of methamphetamine. Um, we prosecuted that individual. That person is now in, in prison um, regarding that, um, that crime. Um, we are uh, in the process of um, prosecuting um, a serious hearing dealer currently uh, on a serious strike felony. Um, and I think it's very important to focus on the, the heaviest criminal uh, masterminds, if it were, um, because they're using the other people as their pawns. Um, and that it's like the head of a snake. If, if you cut off the head of the snake, the, the rest will fall. And I think, again, a, a lot of the lower level um, individuals who are working in the drug field are addicts. And they work there in order to get a supply. So again, if we're able to address the most problems, we're going to be able to eradicate. It's going to be a, a reduction that we need. Thank you. So, um, thank you, Megan. Yes. Um, you referred to him a few times when you were speaking of the probation department with both the drug court and the rehab program. Are you talking of Mr. Rogers? Yes, I spoke with, yes, with the chief probation officer. Okay. He's on the... I uh, just want to make sure it was Trinity County, because you were kind of jumping back and forth on some programs there, so I was just following up. And then the Fish and Wildlife, you were setting up the protocol. Um, um, has that been implemented, and is that just for our region, or is this something that's happening throughout California now? It's, uh, once I'm appointed, I'll be able to complete that protocol. Um, I believe that we need a protocol here in Trinity County. And my um, direction, um, was that we need to meet with environmental health, we need to meet with the planning department, we need to meet with the board of supervisors, because I think we all need to be in agreement on how to handle these cases. Um, especially when you have someone um, who is going through the process of trying to do the right thing and get their permit done. Um, I think that it's important that everybody knows what will happen if they then violate the terms of those of the permit and then damage our environment and that all of our law enforcement agencies need direction on how we're going to go, especially since the law is changing so rapidly in this arena. Um, we need to have something in writing, which I think actually will lend itself to become a handbook that we would be able to use uh, with the planning department with environmental health um, that will help have consistency in every single one of our cases. Okay, uh, but be mindful we're about four minutes behind. Quick follow up back to your drug court um, comment. I believe you know that came out of Prop 36 in our courts. I don't know if it was funding, but it was eliminated. Do you see that coming back up through the court system? I, I had many parents tell me that was very helpful to them and their children. Um, is this something you will have to do on your own, or just you expect the courts? to be participating? Actually, on the Trinity County Community Court Board, um, Judge Harper is very involved uh, mm -hmm. in that project. Um, we used to have a juvenile drug right. court. We used to have an adult drug court. Um, when the previous judge stepped in, all of those um, were eliminated. Um, so no, I, I believe that uh, all of our agencies are really committed to making that happen. Um, we did apply for one grant last year. Um, I'm going to be uh, working on um, applying for additional grants. There are a number of federal grants available for drug courts um, nationwide. And um, I think that our county is in a unique position that we should be able to receive some of those. Thank you. Okay. 
And I'll have Sophie do uh, number five. This will basically be a two-part question. Good morning. So the first part of the question is, please explain how you have created an optimal working relationship with elected officials, county executive officers, city managers, department heads, local and state law enforcement, other government agencies and constituents with whom you interact. What have you done to establish credibility and facilitate communications with them? Okay. Um, I've actually formed very strong relationships with all of our county agencies, uh, including child welfare services, adult protective systems, behavioral health, uh, probation I work with every single day. Um, I've conducted trainings with the Human Response Network, and I work very closely with our victim advocates in court. I've worked with our Trinity County Environmental Health Department, our Planning Department, Health and Human Services. I've appeared in court um, repeatedly for County Council on uh, multiple dependency uh, cases. And I, I am a team player. I think it's very important that we all work together um, to um, help all the uh, issues that we face here at Trinity County. I also have a good relationship with the CEO and several of our Boris Supervising um, members. I usually have letters of recommendation from several department heads, um, including the Chief of Probation, Tim Rogers, um, our Trinity County Treasurer, CHP, the Auditor's Office. Uh, several other community members have also uh, written who know my work ethic and that I'm committed to this position. I also have a very strong relationship with our schools. Um, I'm on the SAR board, uh, and anyone who's worked with me in that regard knows that I'm very dedicated to our training. Um, you should have recommendations from our superintendents and principals as well. Um, I also have a good relationship with all of our public defenders and defense staff. I form a strong bond with all of our court personnel. I work with our senior circuit prosecutor, Matt Carr, whose um, specialty is environmental violations. I've been working with Carter um, regarding the prosecution of multiple class action suits. Um, we have um, several cases where Trinity community members have been defrauded by very large companies, and those are currently going through the federal court system. Um, I also have a very strong relationship with the Attorney General's office. I worked there, um, and I have a great deal of experience um, preparing and arguing appellate issues, um, which is one of the duties of the district attorneys. Um, to give you an example, I just um, received an appeal on a 1991 murder from Hawkins Bar. I don't know if you remember the very brutal um, case where eight co-defendants brutally tortured and murdered a handicapped person in the campground at Hawkins Bar. But I did receive that appeal. Uh, that was a case that took six years to prosecute. It was handled in several different counties. I reached out to our special prosecutor, uh, Robert Maloney. I have reviewed the entire higher trial um, documents, which are extremely voluminous. They take up uh, most of our basement. Um, and I know it's very important um, as your DA to have the relationships and to do the extra work to make sure that those appeals are um, properly completed. Um, we actually have several cases that have been reversed on appeal um, that are now on my desk, um, murder, uh, two murder cases that are going to have to be retried. Um, and I think. Uh, but most importantly, that our entire staff at the district attorney's office supports me for this position. Um, I am the only candidate who has already formed very strong public bonds with everybody in that office. And um, I think it's important um, to know that appointing the SDA ensures that you're going to have a seamless transition. Okay, go ahead, Mark. Can you please describe your interactions with the Board of Supervisors, County Council, CAO, or current and past judges, and describe your relationships with them? Yes, I um, have no problem going and speaking to any Board of Supervisor member about any issue. I've spoken with our CAO, um, CEO, and I have a very good relationship with our judges. Um, I think that uh, it's important that they know that they can rely on that I'm going to, um, especially in court, that I'm going to be preparing very uh, detailed and researched briefs um, that are going to accurately reflect what the law is, that are going to be able to provide them with the answer so that they are going to know what the right decision and the procedure will be. And I also am that type of person that um, is going to present a solution. I'm not going to come and bother you with problems. There, there are a lot of problems that we have to face in this community. But I have already have thought about that problem myself and come up with what I think is going to be a collaborative um, 
solution that I can present to you and explain my pros and cons and be able to work. So I think that uh, my relationships have been formed and will help with this position. Any, any follow up questions on number five? All right, John, go ahead and handle number six. Thank you. The, big, the victim of a very heinous crime wants to pursue charges that are only marginally supported by the evidence. Describe what actions you would take. Well, when a case comes to the DA's office, frequently there are holes in proof that make it difficult to prosecute. And when I've uh, trained new DDAs, the way that I describe it to them is that we receive a raft, and we have to take that raft across a tumultuous ocean in order to be able to get a conviction. If there are holes in that raft, that's, that's reasonable doubt. You have to prepare in advance to patch those holes because during trial, the defense attorney is going to be stabbing holes in your raft the whole entire time. So you have to be able to be prepared. And it is our job as DAs to make sure that our cases are completed properly. Um, sometimes um, DDAs will get a case where there's a hole in the evidence and their response is to blame law enforcement and give up and say, oh, well. And that's not my style. I, I contact the investigating officers. I explain to them what, what the elements of the crime are. I explain what we would need on these kind of prosecutions. I go out and investigate cases. I, I go to the scene of the crime. I, I've taken photos with my own cell phone for trial. Because it's important, the, the stronger the case is, the more likely it is that it's going to resolve. And I am always cognizant of the burden that is on our community member to come and sit on our jury for one to two weeks. They have to stop their jobs, they have to leave their families, and I am not going to burden our community uh, unnecessarily on a case that doesn't warrant it. Um, I'm also not going to waste our valuable court resources for cases that do not have the necessary proof. And when you have cases, and I have, that are very serious, that do not have the necessary evidence, I meet with the victims. I explain to them what would be needed in order to be able to prove the crime. And most victims understand that. I don't have a magic wand. I, I can't create facts. I only have the facts that are presented to me. But generally speaking, I, I provide advice um, to help them in their future problems. I've uh, had cases where we had victims who were very concerned uh, about some crimes that were occurring. Um, and um, encourage them to get some surveillance video, get a nanny cam, do something to protect yourself for the future because if I'm able to have the evidence, I will do something to protect them. Um, and I think it's, again, it's very critical for our uh, attorneys to be able to exercise proper prosecutorial discretion. There are cases like serious developments that require an ardent and fervent prosecution. And again, there are more minor cases that require a more reasoned and balanced approach. And I think it's, um, as your DA, I'm going to be able to ensure that the case law is going to be handled properly and that all the cases have the necessary evidence before we would go forward. Okay. Any follow ups? All right. Question seven. If you are selected for this position, tell us how you will define your goals in the first six months as the Trent County District Attorney. Well, and I can tell you, I've already begun that. I've uh, been your acting DA here for um, over a month now, and I've already begun working on my goals to improve the office. Um, when I moved into the DA's position, I located boxes and boxes of cases that had not been handled. Um, I immediately began to review each and every single one of those police reports. And I can assure you that this backlog of cases will not happen under my supervision. Uh, I believe it's very important for us to have prompt handling of um, legal cases that come into my office. I've spent the past month preparing um, multiple serious strike felony cases. Uh, again, I told you that we have um, six um, new victims of child molestation that I have already met with. Um, I'm doing multiple murder cases. And this is already on top of my extremely large caseload. I handled hundreds of cases, including the Coffee Creek uh, multiple child molestation case, um, which is across county and state lines, um, a serious repeated rape of a seven-year-old child, um, $50,000 embezzlement case at the DMV. Um, as your DA, I'm going to ensure that those cases are handled properly. And in addition to my prosecutorial duties, 
I now handle all the administrative duties as your DA. I oversee our grants, um, timesheets, our trainings, our purchases, and our budgets. Um, and it's my goal to increase the grants that we have here in our Trinity County DA's office. The Trinity County DA is also the public administrator. And what that means is that when someone dies without any heirs, the DA public administrator is responsible for handling that entire estate. And we have multiple estates that have been sitting for years. And I don't think I have to tell you that when a house is vacant in Trinity County, it becomes a target. And it is the responsibility of the public administrator to properly um, protect those estates. Um, and these homes that have been left vacant um, have suffered serious destruction. We've had drug addicts throw up through the floor to break into these homes. Um, I want to tell you that once appointed, um, I would be able to address that legacy duty immediately. As your DA, I've already um, reviewed the entire public administrator um, process. I've already um, obtained a list of probate attorneys in order to be able to promptly take care of that issue. I'm also currently responsible for all of our personnel issues. And again, I'm in a unique position of understanding the interpersonal dynamics of our personnel, our strengths and weaknesses of our office. We've had quite a bit of turnover in our legal staff in the last couple of years. Um, so I've already started a DA policy procedure manual in order to be helped with the training of our new hirees. I've already started a monthly staff meeting to address issues so that cases can be handled properly. I'm going to be overseeing all of the case management um, and make sure our office is running smoothly. Um, also in the last month, I have already conducted interviews to replace our business manager. Um, our business manager is a very important role in the DA's office. It handles our payroll, our grant applications, our grant compliance, and our entire budget. Um, as your current DA, I wasted no time in um, posting this, and I've already interviewed and um, prepared to address that upcoming vacancy. I've also posted the DDA position uh, to backfill my position um, once this appointment process is completed. Um, again, I'm in the unique position of understanding personnel needs of our office and understanding what our community wants for prosecution. So I'm in the best position to be able to hire a DDA who's going to best be able to work within our community. And as soon as I'm appointed, I will be able to hire a new DDA, which means I can properly assign caseloads, taking into consideration the strengths and weaknesses of our within our office. So I can tell you, it won't take me six months to transition. Um, I've already um, started those projects, um, and because I've worked in this office for years, I already have um, recognized and um, understand what the problems are so that I can address them now. Okay. Question eight. <clears throat> Please describe your experience managing a county department or major division of an organization and provide examples of your management style. I actually um, was, uh, um, <coughs> excuse me, responsible for managing the entire juvenile department in the Placer County DA's office for years. That was a very uh, significant department with over 700 cases with multiple serious violent felonies, including murder, manslaughter, rape, um, armed robbery, serious gang assaults. Um, I was responsible um, for handling all the 707 violations for the most serious and violent strike felonies in that department. I um, actually received commendations from our DA for handling that department so smoothly. I remained in that department for many years. Um, I have a collaborative style of management. I like to work closely with the attorneys, um, the probation officers, and the courts in order to find a best resolution for cases. I think because of my strong relationship here with the Trinity County agencies, we will work well to find solutions to our case problems. I've noticed that um, some supervisors like to ignore problems until they get to a boiling point and explode. And that is not my style. I am a proactive supervisor. I can see when a problem is starting to germinate, and if I step in, I can redirect behaviors immediately rather than waiting for them to go unchecked and get out of control. And this is kind of why I have implemented a monthly staff meeting, so I can address some issues that we have within our office and keep things running smoothly. Um, the previous supervisor had a very hands-off style. Um, as a result, uh, 
our staff has turned to me for years um, to come and ask me what they should do about the problems um, within the office. I have an open door policy. They know that I'm going to listen to their problems and that I'm going to address them. Um, I, again, I'm also very good at calming people down um, and addressing when people are getting upset. I'm also a very flexible manager. Um, not every employee is the same. Some require a very structured approach in order to be successful. Others are very self-driven and have a more hands-off approach. Um, and because I know the um, inner personalities of the people that work in the DA's office, I'm going to be able to address those issues specifically once I'm Okay, follow-ups? All right, the supervisor mind, so you can number nine. Sure. Management and administration of the DA's office budget is a key responsibility of the DA. Describe your level of fiscal experience and knowledge, in particular preparing, managing, and administrating a department budget. Describe your fiscal management philosophy during the difficult budgetary cycles. Um, I do have budget experience. As I mentioned earlier, I ran the entire juvenile department in Placer County. Um, and I managed to run this entire department without any occurring any additional costs. And this was a time when our budgets were slashed. We had no TA investigator. My secretary only worked part time. And my style is to take on the extra roles myself. I filed my own petitions. I did my own investigations on the weekends. I would address whatever was needed. As the supervisor, I felt it was my responsibility to take up the slack. Uh, so I know firsthand how to run a department on a very tight budget. Um, I'm a person who constantly thinks about how to reduce costs. Do we need it? Can we find it cheaper? Can we live without it? Um, I recognize that the DA's office is a publicly funded agency, and I take that duty very seriously. Um, we're providing a service to this community, uh, and I'm very careful about protecting our public funds. I can tell you I'm actually pretty good at that. I actually was an engineering major uh, took calculus at Stanford. Um, so it's probably why they made me the treasurer for this Raptors Club for the last couple of years. Um, so I am very good at um, managing budget. Um, some supervisors like to spend money um, like water and then come to the end of the fiscal year and have to cut services and do layoffs. And that is not my style. I am a person who saves for the rainy day. Because I know that you have to prepare for unforeseen costs, for example, large balloon payments that occur when one of your employees resigns. Uh, and I know how to do the necessary budget adjustments. Um, I've actually met with our outgoing budget manager. I've gone over our entire DA budget line by line. I am trained in our notice system. I know how to do the necessary budget adjustments. I know that budgets need to come to the Board of Supervisors for special expenditures. Um, and I do have plans to improve um, our DA budget. Years and years ago, we had 12 grants at the DA's office. That has dwindled down to one. Um, it is my goal as your DA to um, actively pursue additional grants that will be able to bring in money for our DA's office, which will help save money for our county. Any follow up? Go ahead. Your office, along with uh, our public defender's office and of course our sheriff department, you know, all have a um, kind of a, of course, are all connected and, and will costs go up in one, it affects the other. And um, we certainly have, have uh, tight budgets around here, some years tighter than others. Um, where would you feel, <clears throat> uh, from a budget standpoint, um, where your office may or may not affect the cost of a, one of those departments? Where we would affect the cost? Yeah, I mean, in terms of you are oper operating that department, um, if it was a certain direction you would take, where, what would you feel it would um, increase costs in any of those other departments? Well, what I can say is that several of the grants... Versus the history of that department. Yes. Several of the grants that I've been working on with our public agencies are actually collaborative, mm -hmm. which means that the grant money uh, comes not only to the DA's office, but it also has a portion that goes to probation and a portion that goes to law enforcement. Um, so I think that the looking with an eye to those specific grants is going to be important because we all need to have the strength of those, that grant money. Uh, in addition, um, 
as a DA, we um, conduct asset forfeiture cases, which again provides grants not, not only money for our office, but also for law enforcement agencies. So I think that it's very important that we all work together. We're all working towards the same goal. Um, and I'm very mindful that the money comes from somewhere. Um, certainly, I'd, I'd like to see uh, money in some other boards where we have some desperate needs um, again, to get some protocols up and running so we can have things uh, done smoothly. So I want to be able to save money as much as possible with extended grants for our DA's office so that money can be used better in other locations. Yeah, I have a follow-up question over, you had mentioned quite a few programs that are really exciting and, and looking forward to um, being implemented, but if you are not appointed uh, as a district attorney, is it your desire to stay on as DDA and see these two fruitions. I'm, I'm very. I don't, you don't have to answer oh, that question. Sorry. Don't, I don't know if that's an appropriate question to ask at this juncture. Okay, I had. Uh, I just had a really quick question. Uh, how big is the budget probation class? Do you remember? I, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay. It, it was larger, but not for the juvenile department, unfortunately. Okay. Um, okay. It was very tight. Any other questions? All right. So this uh, completes your interview. Is there anything else you would like to share with us uh, relative to the position of your experience? As your current acting DA, I'm going to be able to seamlessly transition into this position. Um, my dedication to Trinity County should be very clear. I think, think that the strong relationships that I have formed with the agencies here in this county are going to make me the best candidate for your DA. And I guess I would ask a couple questions. One is, um, does anyone have any concerns with my qualifications to be your uh, current and appointed DA? Because I would love to address any. So do we have any, any more? I think we would have vented those questions to you by now. Thank you. And then my, my final question would be, do you have a timeline on your decision-making process? The reason I ask is because we do have a very staggering caseload, um, and I am prepared to be able to backfill my position, which is going to be critical to be able to make the proper case assignments. So if you have an idea of when you think they can be making a decision. We will meet this um, afternoon and we will move from there. So at this time we don't have, we, we are committed to getting the DA's office back up and running at full strength as fast as possible. So. Thank you. All right, thank you. And we did that in 46 minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Okay, so our next person is scheduled for 11.45. So, uh, with that, unless we have further discussions, we'll take a break until 11.45, I guess.